Hey guys, welcome to the shop. This week, got a little bit of lathe work, a little bit of mill work. I'm gonna be using the rotary table. Got to do some threading as well. And what I want to do is replicate this aluminum screw-on cap. I really want to make a complete weld-on bung that I can weld onto my valve cover so I have a good place to put oil in my engine. So we're gonna be making one of these, and I'm also gonna see if I can get Elizabeth to do some custom artwork on the tops of these caps, because I want them to match, right? with her laser engraver, which is really cool. And I think, uh, I think you'll find that interesting. So let me bring you over here. I'll show you what we're going to do and, and we'll get started. So this aluminum tank was picked up for me by Bruce Bingham. I really appreciate that. I got it off Amazon. It's just a general use container, right? Two barbed fittings, got a drain on the bottom, got a little fitting on the side. So you can probably move these around to suit whatever application you got. Little sight glass on the side. Pretty nice, not Moroso brand, it just stuck that sticker on there. And what I want to do, like I mentioned, is replicate this cap because I think it will work really well for my valve covers. Inch and a half on the inside diameter, so you could just jam a quart of oil down in there. You know, no funnel needed, right? Got a nice O-ring seal, so that should hold this in place and seal it well. 60 degree thread, so it should be pretty easy to just make a new one. Plus we got a nice flat surface on the top. And then you know, Elizabeth maybe can do some magic on that with her laser engraver and customize it a little bit farther. So let's go over the lathe and see if we can't make us a new weld-on bung for our valve cover. So I say this is a simple cap, and it really is, but if we want the cap that we make to look like this one, we need to be able to measure all the features that are on this. So we've got 12 finger holds. We can replicate those finger holds with a three-quarter inch radius three-quarter inch end mill, right? Three-eighths radius. We've got a radius out here on the front edge that is 11 sixty-fourths. And then we've got an angle right here that I have measured out to 30, 35 degrees. Eh, you know, we could take a 60 degree cutting a threading tool and run up to that and act like we didn't see that other five degrees and it wouldn't make any difference, but you know, or we could angle the tool post as well. We've got 12 threads per inch. We've got 5 eighths on our depth, 2 and a quarter inch on our outside diameter. And then on the inside to retain this O-ring, it's just got a square cut relief in the back at the bottom of the thread there. So that's it, really. A lot going on there. but. You know, we should be able to uh, to mimic all those features with the tooling that we have. So this is not the best blade that I'm using for aluminum. It's not near aggressive enough and cuts pretty slow. But I've got my coolant on pretty heavy, so it's blasting all of the, the chips out of the blade before it gets back in the work. You can see it's, it's doing its job, plus lubricating the blade. I really like this coolant system. It's about due for a coolant change, though. So that is a very nice chunk of 6061. It's a two and a half inch uh, diameter, probably, I don't know, three inches long, three and a half inches. So we should be able to get both pieces out of this. That's the thought anyway. Now the order of operations that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna machine it like this. So we'll come in, we'll face, we'll face our part, turn down to our major OD, then we'll part it off to length, flip it, put it in the chuck, come in, hollow it out, thread it, and then come in and do our reduced diameter and that little angle there. Then we'll take it over to the mill and we'll put in our uh, finger reliefs.
Come on, come on, come on, come So we got our major OD in there, but I might as well go, go ahead and put in that large radius there. And it looks like 1164 to me, really close anyway. So I've got a tool here, same tool that I used to put the ball end on my clutch linkage for the pickup truck. It's 1164, but in order for this to actually produce that radius that we want, I need to run this edge this tool back a little bit. You could use the bench grinder, would work just fine, but I'm gonna stick it in the cutter grinder because I'm pretty much set up already over there for it. So let's take this tool out and go make it, make it actually do what we want it to do. That's pretty much it. All I wanted to do was remove this leg. Just get us a half radius there. I think that's good enough. Pretty simple. And quick. Pretty good. about as far as we're going to get with this one.
So in the tailstock of the chuck here, I have a one inch two flute center cutting end mill that I'm gonna use just to establish a rough hole. I'm gonna use the graduations on the quill of my tailstock to feed in right shy of five eighths of an inch. That'll get my hole started, and then I'll come in with a boring bar and get this hole to its final dimensions. This is just for, you know, just for a rough start. That's probably good enough to get us going. So now that we've got the hole roughed out, we can use this little bar here, and because of the geometry there on the end, we can bore and face with it. And it's just held in a little uh, uh, tool steel block here. It's got a small slit in it, and I can pinch this down in my tool holder. It allows me to move the bar in or out and twist it if I want. It's a nice little block. So here's the tool that we're going to use to thread the inside, and all it is is a half inch carbide end mill that I've turned down on the cutter grinder and made into an internal threading tool. So now we've got a setup for 12 threads per inch. So move this handle here, and number two over here, and that's it. Engage our gear, we're good to go. So this Hindi lathe has a feature that I don't see all that often, and that's a lead screw forward, reverse, and neutral handle. So for short threads like this, no need to disengage the lead screw ever during it. So let me just give you a quick run through. So we got our spindle running, we can put our lead screw in forward, and then we engage our half nut just anywhere we want carriage moves forward, we're cutting a thread, let's just say, we get to the end of it, hit neutral, it stops, we reverse out of the cut with the compound, the cross slide, and then we reverse the lead screw and completely back out. We stop, set our depth to cut again, and put it in forward. Never once having to disengage the actual half nut no keeping up with numbers, nothing like that. So it's a pretty nice feature.
take that. Well, that works. Lathe work is pretty much done. We'll knock that edge off though. So. so now what I need to do is put these finger reliefs in our new cap and I want to show you a super simple way uh, to zero a rotary table or set up like this anyway underneath the quill and I do this all the time when 100% accuracy is not really all that important, right? For a thousandth off X or Y, it's not going to make any difference. So I've got a countersink in the uh, in the quill of the in the quill of the milling machine here, and I'm just going to let that down inside of the chuck. I've got the rotary table loose on the table, and then I'm just going to tighten down the chuck. Right for a self-centering chuck on a rotary table, if you need to be within a thou or so, this is plenty accurate enough, especially for what we're doing. And that's it. Tighten down the rotary table with the chuck you know, clamp down on whatever you got in the quill. And there we go. We are centered both X and Y within reason you know, that fast. So now we need to figure out our depth on, on our finger reliefs. There's 12 of them, so 360 degrees divided by 12 is 30. So every 30 degrees we'll have to stop and, you know, put one of these reliefs in. And our major 2.225, so 2.225, and we will subtract that from our minor, which is across the bottoms of two of these reliefs, so 2.050, 2.050 equals 0.175, and we'll divide that by 2, so 87 and a half thousandths after touch off is how deep the grooves in the original cap are. So that's what we'll do. We'll touch off, we'll feed in 87 and a half thousandths, 87, 88, right? And then we will make our finger groove and then we'll repeat that 12 times. So that's it. Boom. Cap complete. Looks good too.
here. Look at that. So let's see if our Harbor Freight O-ring sets save the day here. I need one for that cap. So I went ahead and made the actual weld-on piece. I just made it off camera. It's the least interesting part of the two. Just a hole with a thread and a chamfer. That's it. So, but we need an O-ring for this. All right. I'm going to take this one out of the original and see if we have one. These come from Harbor Freight, right? Great to have around around the shop. Is that right? I mean, it's not exactly right. But it's close. It's a SAE. No. No. I think that is the closest that we're going to get. So let's see if it fits. Huh. Perfect. Close enough, anyway. Yep, squeezes down on it. And there we go. Almost complete. So now I need to pull this valve cover off. And we need to weld on our fitting on the top there. Look pretty good, I think. So I'm all set up here. We're 115 amps. We'll see how that acts. And hopefully, this turns out good. Everything's good and clean. That's really important with aluminum. Something's in there. Of course it would. Looks okay. Everywhere else. Hmm. <sighs> well, that's not good. I don't know what it is about aluminum, but I dip the tungsten far more often in aluminum than I do anything else. I'm just not a great uh, aluminum welder. I just don't weld a lot of it. Looks good though. <laughs> Until you get to the part that doesn't. We'll have to clean that up. I'm going to use this little pin grinder and a carbide burr to burr that out. And hopefully I can take off and finish that weld out because, uh, you know, that's not good. So I picked up, I was digging around on KBC Tools' website, and I picked up this 3-in-1 oil. I was surprised to find they offered this. I didn't know 3-in-1 actually offered specific air tool oil, and that's quite a bit. Really, that'll last for years. Nice little pinpoint oiler there so you can just drip a few drops into the air tools this is all I had left so I was running out so I picked that up and also because I can't just buy one thing I picked up this nice stare at 604 R hook rule that actually came with it was a set this number 22-C drill point 59 degree drill point uh, gauge so now you can hook a drill onto the hook you can measure the height of the flute and the length 
you know, rotate it 180 degrees and compare it to the other when you're sharpening them. So that's really nice. I did not have one of these. I do have a drill point gauge, but it's just the generic version. So this is so much nicer. So really happy to have that. So I'm going to burr this out and hopefully take off and finish it out. So there it is on the engine, probably two hours between welding and fighting this thing and then grinding it and polishing it to where it looks decent. Oh, I'm glad to have it on there. It looks okay, right? Still a little rough, but looks perfectly fine for, for what it needs to do, right? All that matters really is that it's sealed. I'm going to get Elizabeth to do some engraving on the top of this. I'll paint the top and she can engrave in the paint because her laser engraver I should have asked her before I even said anything. Won't engrave on aluminum for some reason. I don't know anything about it. She's the guru when it comes to that. But looks good. It's so much better than pouring oil through something like that because that's all that was there before. What, a three-quarter inch hole? I did the same thing on my, uh, or on my old engine. It had the same thing, and I had to pour all the oil that I changed in that motor through that little grommet and it was a pain in the you know what and that's why I did wanted to do this. So much nicer, right? Plus that o-ring holds this cap on real tight so shouldn't have any problems. So this is the laser engraver that we're going to be using. It's it's on loan to us through Glowforge, and it's a Glowforge Pro. This is, there's three levels of this machine, and I, I'll have to admit, I was really skeptical when this thing showed up, but quickly impressed. This is what we're gonna be using, obviously, to engrave on the two caps there. This thing will engrave just un, unreal, intricate little pieces. It'll just blow your mind. So, I've painted the tops of both of these caps, simply because this machine doesn't, it's not, it doesn't cut metal, but it will easily engrave and stuff. And I've painted the tops so that, uh, you know, so that we can see the engraving much better. So let me show you a few of the pieces that my lovely wife Elizabeth made just, just here recently, right? Just for, for yeah. demo. And uh, then we'll put the caps in this machine and you know, start cutting. So here's a few examples of some stuff that I've engraved on. Yeah, wood your acrylics, leather, you can engrave on metal, yep. stone. Um, stone, food, whatever. You want to put a banana in here <laughs> and engrave your name on a banana, you can do that as well. We actually made in this machine a tombstone for our uh, little uh, pup Itzy who just passed away here recently. We actually went down into the creek, found a nice stone that we liked and put it in this machine and engraved all the information on it. So. Really, your limiting fact, the limiting factor on this machine is pretty much your imagination. So there's the caps that we're going to be engraving on. Nice little earring. Yep, 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 really nice stuff. Leather, wood, acrylic. right, acrylic, I mean, anything. Cork, whatever, whatever paper, right. anything. Now, this machine, if you're interested in getting something like this, if this strikes your interest, I'm going to put a link in the description where you can go check out this machine, right? This is on loan to us by Glowforge, and if you want to get one for yourself, you can use that link in the description that I put to save a boatload of money on one of these, and also, if you do buy one using that link, it also helps Elizabeth to own this machine for herself, so, you know, help yourself out, help her out. If you're interested in one of these, it would be greatly appreciated. So let's get started and uh, put our logos on these caps. How hard do you think that it was to for you to get at least the basic operation of this machine? Took a little know, while. It was, it was a little while, like getting the settings on stuff like different yeah. materials. Yeah. But like Glowforge, they send you samples when you come in, so you don't have to mess with the settings because it'll have like a 
code yeah. thing okay. on it, and you don't have to mess with the settings because it. It's already in the program. Yeah. So when you have to do something like this, like they have this silver MacBook, so you can click that. This ain't got a barcode on it or anything. Hmm. But some things you just have to Trial practice. Trial and error. Yeah, practice till you get it right. And a lot of that stuff that I had done, I had to just practice. Yeah. awesome. My paint job don't look awesome, but the artwork does. So there's both designs. Now I haven't cleaned them yet, but this paint is not. I let it dry for like four minutes before we laser engrave those. So I'm gonna let this paint get a little harder and then we can clean out the inside. I'll do that later, but you get the idea. It'll clean up, it'll be bare aluminum where the laser engraved and it's gonna look awesome. So I put the Made in the USA cap on the overflow tank and the built by Steve Summers and the truck logo on the engine. So caps are done. So take them off the list, Elizabeth. Thank you, love. <laughs> all right, guys, that's all I have time for this week. I don't even have time to let that paint dry and clean those caps up for you. <laughs> but trust me, they're, they're gonna look awesome. Huge thanks to Elizabeth for, uh, for all the help, right? That machine is pretty neat, a little complicated, <laughs> you know, we're, we're learning, but uh, it's nice. That's it. Thanks for watching. Viewers, patrons, subscribers, anybody who's helped us out whatsoever. It is much appreciated. And we will see you next time. The birds fly south as the light leaves your eyes. Hold on to your dream. Hoping to break through